In this video, we're covering 10 minimalist tips to help you work better from home. I'm Tom, the founder of Pack Hacker. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and ringing that bell icon for notifications. Currently, the team is working from home, and before this, a lot of us at Pack Hacker have traveled and worked remotely, carrying everything we need for a full-time job on our backs. Over the years, we have had to get scrappy with work setups that are less than ideal. All that to say, we have a ton of experience working from home, working remotely, and working with a team across different time zones. We're gonna be covering tips that turn those disadvantages into advantages. And make sure to head over to packhacker.com, check out the blog post. We get into a little bit more detail over there and it's scannable as well for reference later. Let's jump in. If you're used to going into an office, try to wake up at the normal time that you would while you're working from home. This will give you a lot more time in the morning as you won't have that commute to worry about. Go for a run, learn a new language, view a couple of YouTube videos, pack hackers of course, or if morning is when you're more productive, start working earlier for a more chill and tapered off afternoon into the evening. I found that dressing as I normally would, including putting shoes on, helps me maintain a bit of a sense of normalcy and just helps my focus in general. Another pro tip, if you can, try to plan your day the night before. It'll make your morning a lot more smooth. Over communicating is better than under communicating in nearly every scenario. At Pack Hacker, we have plenty of team members in different time zones and I've worked at plenty of companies with the same exact remote setup. Between Slack and Asana, we communicate asynchronously a lot, which means we don't have to be face-to-face. -face. We can send messages and delays in time and response is totally okay with our work setup. In order for this to work, you have to be proactive. So if you're assigning a task to somebody, try to provide a little bit more detail than they would require. And then also try to anticipate any questions they may ask beforehand. So if you can answer a question preemptively, it's a lot better and smoother overall. This way they can start with the task without being blocked from you. So if you head out to lunch or something like that, they're not sitting around and waiting for an answer from you before they can begin. On the receiving side of things, when in doubt, ask. Pro tip, if you can rephrase the ask to your coworker that asked you to do something in a very clear way, it can help you avoid miscommunication and just confirm what it is that you're supposed to be doing. Lastly, fire up a video chat program. You don't necessarily have to have an official meeting set up to just hop on and get into a casual conversation, especially if a lot of the team is working remotely or from home. When working from home, many things can go wrong, so be prepared. We all love the many video conferencing services out there, and occasionally, sometimes, some programs can perform worse than others. We use multiple services, including Zoom, Google Hangouts, Google Meet, FaceTime, Slack, and Facebook Messenger. Take it from me, a previous freelance designer that has about 20 of these meeting programs installed on my computer, as a lot of clients require a very specific program. So before I hop on a meeting, I make sure to have everything prepared and all the programs installed that I need to communicate properly. Being plugged into your modem or router can be really helpful to avoid unexpected interruptions as well. It just makes your connection a lot smoother. This is really important for those important meetings. If your connection goes down and everything else fails, a lot of these meeting platforms offer a dial-in number. So if you keep your phone next to you during the day, you can easily pick that up, dial the number, and get right back into the meeting. Pro tip, get up and go to the bathroom and get a beverage ready before an online meeting, as sometimes they can last longer than expected. Keeping some of your office habits while working from home can make the day go more smoothly. One tip is to take a scheduled lunch just like you would at the office. I can't tell you how many times I've just skipped right over lunch while working from home. It's just too easy to do. And you can schedule breaks throughout the day using alarms on your phone if you really need that reminder. Just like when someone brings a big box of donuts to the office, sometimes it's best to avoid excess snacking during the day as well as that's also too easy to do while you're at home. Pro tip, if you want to snack throughout the day, leave some fruits and vegetables within eyesight so you can graze guilt-free. 
Just like you leave the office, you can also leave your workday. If you have a separate office within your home, that's great. You can easily close the door when you're done for the day and then revisit the next morning. If you don't have a separate space in your home, you can handle this by closing your laptop or turning off your computer. This is a great indicator to yourself that anything that comes in after that time, you can handle the next day. Lastly, doing a transitional activity at the end of your day, like going for a run or watching a video, can help you transition from work into life, since you don't have that commute as a separator anymore. Working from home can create a whole list of distractions that you do not have while you're working at an office. If you're easily distracted by social media, you may want to block those with browser extensions or delete them off of your phone. Apple's screen time gives you some nice analytics that shows you how much you've used certain apps and there are a ton of other apps that monitor this as well. Additionally, you can go old school and add some physical distance from yourself to your phone if it is super tempting and you need to concentrate. If you're able, set specific times throughout the day to check your notifications and your email. If you have concentrated blocks of time where you can get into some deep work and really focus on the task at hand without worrying about notifications or emails that come in as you're working, it often produces a better working result. Now this can be a little bit harder to do as a manager as oftentimes your team needs your help throughout the day, but if you're an individual contributor, it's a little bit easier to pull off. Make sure to get your playlist right. We are big fans of music without lyrics here at Pack Hacker, like lo-fi and study beats. It's really helpful to listen to, really get into the zone, and while we're working on reviews, whether we're writing them or editing photos or coding the website, it really helps us get into the groove. Things can get pretty casual at home, so setting boundaries can help maintain focus. Your family may interrupt you at home or your friends may feel like they can call you anytime during the day or get a text message response right away. And if you are clearly communicative about your boundaries and your working schedule, it can help a lot on both ends. Pro tip, you can use headphones as an indicator when you're busy. So if you're in the zone, put your headphones on and tell the rest of your family or the people that you live with, you work with near at home, that that means that you are concentrated and into your work. If you can find some physical separation while you're at home from the rest of your family members, that helps as well. Even if you can just go stick yourself in a corner and hide there, it's often better than being in the middle of the room. None of us on the team have kids and we can imagine that adds a whole other element to working from home. So if you do have kids and you work from home, we would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Working from home doesn't mean that you have to slump over your laptop at all times. You may find optimal setups, whether it's at your desk, on your couch, at your dining room table, or in your kitchen. The nice thing about working from home is you can move around as you see fit. Over the years, the Pack Hacker team and I have had to optimize our workspaces, whether we're at home or traveling the world. When at home, invest in an ergonomic setup if you can. Standing desks can force you to stand up during the day versus sitting for hours on end. Having a fancy standing desk at home can look and feel nice, but you can also stack a chair on top of a table or a cardboard box even if you want to elevate your screen and stand up while using it. Laptop stands, the right mouse, and the right keyboard can help with a lot of ergonomics. And if you're using that makeshift standing desk, Maybe you just wanna use it when you're on a video call if the ergonomics are less than ideal when you have it set up. Make sure to check out my video on my personal work from home gear. Rebecca also did a video over on the YouTube channel. So check those two videos out. We'll leave links in the description below. Working from home can make you feel sedentary and sluggish if you're in the same place all the time with little exercise. So stay active if you're able. You can get up and stretch after finishing that task before jumping into the next one. You can also use your scheduled breaks or your lunch breaks to get outside, go for a walk during the day. It helps clear your head and helps you remain active. Every little bit of exercise you can do throughout the day is super helpful. If you want to learn more, make sure to check out our other blog post that covers exercising from home when you do not have access to a gym. Pro tip, if you drink a lot of water during the day, it will force you to get up out of your desk and walk over to the bathroom multiple times, basically like forced exercise. When working from home, it can be easy for us to feel cooped up and insular, and sometimes we forget that there is a whole world out there. 
If you're stuck inside, you can have little planned phone chats with friends to catch up, say over lunch. Maybe you and a friend can take a scheduled lunch break together and spend an hour on video chat, eating your lunches and catching up. Additionally, you can plan that morning networking coffee from home with that colleague you've been dying to meet as well. You don't have to commute to the coffee shop. You don't have to stand in line and order from the barista. You can make your coffee at home, take that 15 to 30 minutes to connect, and then be on with your day. Working from home requires some great flexibility from everyone. So if you're flexible with your team, it's likely they'll be flexible with you. Go above and beyond now and then too. Your colleagues will take notice as well as your managers and it will afford you more freedom if they don't feel like they need to micromanage you and really check in to see what you're doing during the day. If you start to slack, it'll be way more noticeable as you won't be communicating properly and your work just won't be getting done. It'll be much easier to identify from a manager. So working from home comes with great responsibility. And lastly, please mute your audio when you are not talking and when you're on a video call, especially if it gets loud, but also be understanding of other colleagues that have barking dogs or loud kids at home as not everything is controllable. So a little flexibility here can go a long way. So there you have it, 10 minimalist working from home tips that can make you be a better remote worker. We would love to hear your tips in the comments below because remember, some of the best tips come from you, the Pack Hacker community. Thanks again for watching this video and keeping it here at Pack Hacker. We'll see you in the next video.